uh, we'll get started. My name is Arkady Spivak. I'm artistic producer for Talk is Free Theater. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. I just want to say that um, uh, the purpose of this call is for you to ask questions and engage in the conversation. And please use Q&A button below uh, to ask questions. Please do not use chat uh, simply because Q&A is where we're going to be looking for questions. And it also gives you an opportunity uh, to ask them anonymously, if you so choose, um, we might be able to fish out your your um, your um, uh, uh, questions from chat. But please uh, remember to put them into Q and A because it makes it so much easier. Uh, I would encourage you to ask questions as um, as uh, I uh, present and discuss the program to you. Uh, d d please ask questions as I go. Do not wait till the last moment because I'm only hoping to talk for about 20 minutes and dedicate uh, perhaps as you know at least half an hour, if not 40 minutes. I've set an hour of my time to talk to you. Um, so uh, feel free to ask questions because this is what I'd like the most of the webinar to be about. And um, if it's necessary, I'll, I will address them as as um, as I go. But I promise to get back to it later on and uh, before we uh, go and um, before we leave the webinar to answer your questions. So art is big is not necessarily a fresh idea of ours within the company. Uh, it was in fact. Um, kind of first appeared a year ago, and I just wanted to give you a history quickly about how we got there. Uh, obviously, uh, the necessity of it became quite uh, quite evident under COVID, um, but that was serendipitous. Uh, the idea for this was kind of born a year ago. Um, at that time, myself and a number of colleagues within the company, actors, designers, uh, representations of all sorts of facets of theater practice, have gotten together uh, because we wanted to, to look at, um, at a program or at, uh, at uh, developing some sort of understanding of the requirements for a support system that would particularly help uh, mid-career artists, uh, those who are at the critical time in their life to decide whether at 40, 42, 45, uh, whether they want to pursue this career and forego every, um, uh, you know, um, every eligibility for a rounded lifestyle or if they want to stay in the, in, in, um, in profession. Because what we've observed is most people were living at mid-career where they are at the peak of their craft, of their practice, were leaving the profession because simply they deserved uh, access to, to, um, to life that other professions enjoy. And so we wanted to look at what could possibly stop that, what could possibly help. Uh, that was uh, generally about parenting and becoming, uh, being a caregiver to children. Um, However, it was more about reconditioning the workforce, the practice for it to happen as opposed to uh, just work with people who are, were active parents at that time. Several things came out of the project. We did internal survey with, um, with our artists of about 120 people were sent a survey to, uh, and general consultations with every different sort of representation of stakeholders that we could find. And several things uh, came out. Uh, first was that uh, in order to work for theater, it would be nice for an organization to pay childcare to artists who are working. That the uh, rehearsal, um, the, the, the span of rehearsal days should be reduced to five hours and ideally for it to be 10 to three so that if anybody needs to meet the children back from school and from uh, daycares, they can do so without having to find the two extra hours in between to send their kids somewhere and then pick them up from somewhere and uh, generally do um, a five-day work week when we are in rehearsal. It was more difficult to do it in tech, although not impossible, but certainly once while we were still in the rehearsal hall. Uh, those three things were extremely easy to do uh, beyond finding the money. So we did that immediately. It did not require any sort of case studies, any research. Uh, you either did it or you didn't. Uh, and we sort of added a rehearsal uh, week to all the shows to facilitate um, um, lesser workload per week. Um, a financial guarantee is something that also came out of this project, but uh, of the research, but it, it required more time and actually us to think about it some more as I continue to do, as I will continue to do over the year. And then of course COVID happens and we all know that um, 
uh, the quickest, the fastest thing, the first thing that happened, everybody went home, all the people were taken off contracts. And so, um, you know, the idea of how do we, that how do we come back and how do we make our practice more sustainable? And in fact, a better paradigm to create theater in the first place, even outside of COVID considerations, uh, was sort of came to the forefront. And so here we are. Uh, not a new idea, uh, but uh, newly needed idea, shall we say. Um, so I want to talk about what this program is and also what it's not. Uh, all this is, is a minimal financial guarantee. So it's not a guarantee for work. You're not going to be contracted for, or recipients of the program will not be contracted for a specific length of work, such as five weeks every year or that kind of stuff. All this is, is the organization will commit a con or will offer a contract to have contracts. The actual um, duration, uh, what it is, whether it's an actor or a director or designer or anything else, would be subject to further conversations after, after artists are selected into the program. I would meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, three, four times as long as necessary in preparation of the season to have a conversations about what is uh, the most important for them artistically to do at this point, uh, what is um, important for their uh, preservation of their lifestyle, all those things, all those considerations, and then marrying them into uh, the most practical, the most reasonable and exciting and, and um, artistically risky and experimental, everything sort of comes, uh, comes together. Um, this program is, is deliberately actor-centric, uh, but not exclusively, so I encourage everyone to apply, uh, but I'll explain what I mean. So actor-centric is because, you know, during a time such as this, uh, a playwright, although nobody's earning royalties from, because nobody's producing any plays, it is possible for a playwright to get a commission from a theater, those theaters, uh, the theater companies that do new work, uh, to get a commission to write any play. It is possible for them to write a, a, a grant application to any of the arts councils as an individual artist and uh, uh, get paid for their time in creating a play that way. And also they could access professional development funding that is available in most arts councils and, and there are some foundations that, that do that. Uh, to basically say I'd like to um, uh, extend my knowledge uh, of design that would facilitate and uh, that would facilitate my writing practice because I can I can write a play with design those kind of things none of those things are available uh, to actors um, the only thing that actors know as I don't have to tell you is uh, uh, how to get hired by a theater company and you know speak the the words given to you on the page by playwrights and whatnot uh, funding uh, organizations specifically rule actors out from any professional development considerations for the reason I, I don't actually know, but I think there are two reasons. Number one, there is a lot of actors to, um, to support potential and the money will just not extend that far. And uh, secondly, for the purposes of funder and for the purposes of funder only, it's very difficult to determine who is professional actor that is in fact seriously pursuing the career as opposed to a director, designer, musician, dancer, those, um, although dancers, any performers are not eligible, uh, creative uh, artists or uh, creators are, or interpreters. Um, so those are the two reasons. So, you know, here we are uh, uh, at the time when there isn't really a support system that was established and, and I, I wanted something like that to, to address uh, that challenge. Uh, for, for those who, and, and, uh, it is actor-centric and we encourage people to think of their careers as theater makers and trying to venture into playwriting, directing, whatever area they think, but not exclusively. So if, if, if you would like to apply and you're an actor and you just want to be an actor and nothing else, it's perfectly fine. You just need to talk about, you know, the work that might not be available to you, that will never be available to you in your view for such and such reason, those kind of things. For... Uh, Someone who is not an actor, a director, and playwright, we encourage you to apply, although I will caution that there will only be a smaller percentage of, the, of, of um, 
uh, of uh, non-actors uh, who are admitted into the program, just because also the other thing I forgot to mention is when you're an actor, the economy of scale is very difficult. You have to be there to earn a living. A playwright doesn't, a director doesn't necessarily design it. Like there are such things as royalties, although who, uh, how, how much are we talking about in Canadian theater, we don't know. But theoretically speaking, it's, it's possible. Uh, so if you are a non-actor, you'd like to apply to a program, you just basically need to talk about how you see yourself fitting into actor-centric program and, um, you, and what are the opportunities to take risk uh, uh, it could offer you that is not available anywhere else. So basically those, those two areas. Um, uh, I want to uh, also say that um, um, the program is not for everyone. And it's certainly not the way. Uh, it doesn't change anything. Uh, artists who just want to be signed to one contract whenever they're free uh, will not lose this opportunity because this particular program will only look after 25% approximately of the workforce that uh, we normally engage on, a, on, a, on an annual basis. Uh, the other 75% um, will um, can still uh, have a long-term and in fact, fulfilled relationship with us and multiple functions without the program. Uh, who the program is for is people who really want uh, to contribute to developing a new operating paradigm, who would like to make a change beyond, uh, you know, what they normally would be called to do. And part of that what is a uh, necessity for um, monthly meetings that uh, that members of the program will, will be, uh, and they're paid, uh, probably between an hour and a half to two hours a month, where members will be asked to attend the majority of, of them by Zoom, so that you could be in various places of the country, um, uh, and they're paid. Um, so those are, and, and, and then there might be a necessity to provide some written reports, because uh, Part of what we're hoping to do is develop a program that in some shape or form can be duplicated by other theater companies and dance companies, any performing arts organizations. I'm not sure about uh, visual arts, but certainly dance, music, um, not maybe. Anyway, you know what I mean. So, um, so what this is, it's a minimum financial guarantee. And it's a minimum guarantee. Uh, we think that the minimum we should offer is ten thousand dollars because anything less than that is impractical. And what it actually means is this is just a minimum guarantee. You, a, a member, could earn fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand a year because the actual contracts, the actual earning of the, the actual working, will still be administered by appropriate unions, by appropriate agents. Uh, um, artists who worked for the company before will not be taking a pay cut. If anything, they might be given a small increase like per usual practice. Uh, it's still subject to negotiation how much your service is for that particular contract. Um, at the same time, uh, it is entirely possible that, that artists who are not on a program can end up, can end up uh, getting paid more than those who are. Uh, because there could be, there, there could be a, a, a graduate of a theater school who we don't know about, who graduated, they're brilliant, they end up in every one of our shows, they make thirty thousand uh, dollars a year, and somebody who's in who's in a program is ten thousand. So, it think of it as you know cutting across four hundred one in rush hour. There is an express lane, there is a collector's lane. Who knows which one to use? Which one will get you there quicker? They're not quite the same thing, but they're both coexisting and is available and continue to be available um, to, um, to all of you. So $10,000 minimum is just the minimum guarantee. Uh, a guarantee offered could actually be higher, particularly for artists who have worked with, for, with Talk is Free several times in the past. And if on average they've been making over the last three years, $17,000, $20,000, then uh, it would make sense for us to offer them $10,000. So we would take an average, um, as one of the considerations uh, over the past, um, you know, that's sort of, it's, it's very, very flexible, very fluid, depends really on each case. Um, what I um, uh, particularly like about this program is I'm a huge fan of a repertory system, uh, but not exclusively. I think it has uh, um, uh, as many challenges as it gives benefits. And I'm talking about European repertory uh, where, where, um, uh, artists are engaged as employees 
on an ongoing basis. It's not seasonal. Shows run for years in rotation with other shows. You could be in seven, eight of them. You could be in two of them. You could be in none of them. Um, so I wanted to take the advantage of that uh, without, or the benefit of that without, um, without things like losing artistic control, which happens in rep theater all the time. Uh, and uh, artists ending up working for in, for the institution as opposed to for the work. Uh, uh, and it's not just in Canada, it's all over the world. Every time you look work for an established, uh, you know, theater company that's been around for 100 years, it's all about serving that mandate as opposed to an artistic vision that you might have for the kind of work that you want to do uh, to feel fulfilled artistically. So what this program is, uh, the actual, you will notice from the application is the actual project that we will be discussing is inconsequential, totally deliberately inconsequential to the application. What we want to see is where you want to go as a human through your art and your, and your theater making is just a language, just a conduit for where you need to be. Um, and the actual projects will be discussed after uh, with those after they're selected and offered and accepted uh, they accept uh, to to be in the program. Uh, there are sev I wanted to really be very clear and specific that no, you will not be considered owned by the company. Uh, it's it's the money. If I talk about ten thousand dollars, is really two months, three months of work. We understand that. Um, there are multiple clauses in the terms of reference that you might have read on the on the website about the program that talks about the fact that the work is mutually agreed uh, upon between myself and each member, each each artist member of of the program. Um, uh, you know, including when it takes place. Uh, it is also uh, possible if. Uh, you receive a big contract somewhere else to take a year off without foregoing your inclusion in the program or uh, or your um, or anything uh, for the following years. It is also possible for you to request to stretch uh, the financial guarantee. Let's say if it's ten thousand, so it's thirty thousand over three years. You may request if your circumstances. Um, sort of require it uh, to take it over four years, over five years, I would sooner do that and then forego the terms strategically. Uh, there is also a, uh, an opportunity for people just to leave the program if it's not something that they thought it was going to be with a 60-day notice. And it's perfectly fine because they can still work on a, on a normal sort of contract-to-contract -contract basis. Um, so it's deliberately flexible and it's designed to give you base and but not restrict you to specific kind of work or specific calendar of the year when you can do it. I mean, we do try to do most of the work between the festival seasons because that's where most people are available and they don't have to make the choice in terms of where to go because it's easier. Although <laughs> the choice would never be in our favor because we are <laughs> by far a smaller organization. This is another thing. Um, this program is open to any Canadian artist, not the ones who live in, in Ontario not even in Canada, you could live internationally and be, and be legally um, allowed to earn a living in Canada. It is also possible that you could be part of the program and not to show up and vary more than once in three years. I mean, I would probably challenge you to that because we are a very theater company and whatever, but it is not impossible um, to develop uh, a new play or self-produce something if you are in England or in China or in Winnipeg or anywhere, uh, provided that you can actually legally earn a living in, in Canada. Uh, so it's very targeted, but uh, we've tried everything possible uh, to make it as inclusive and nimble as, as possible at the same time. Uh, I wanted to sort of uh, say again what I said at the beginning is that uh, this is uh, an action research project, meaning that we've thought about everything that we can up to this point, and the actual program will be finalized, developed, tested, changed, modified at mutual consent uh, uh, by doing it. And this is another 
reason to say that it's not necessarily for everyone. You need to be prepared and, and interested in, um, in doing that work. Never doing anything beyond what is artistically interesting to you, but, but just the nature of, of creating something bigger than all of us um, uh, is, is, um, is interesting. Um, yes, so I wanted to be a, as flexible as possible. Um, and this is why your questions are also important because it's not just my opportunity to answer any concerns, any questions, but also potentially realize that, the, 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 <laughs> that there is something that we haven't uh, actually thought of or touched and really requires consideration. So uh, this is why your questions uh, would be invaluable and, um, and necessary for the program. And there are no questions. And um, I, I think I've said all I wanted to say. Uh, does anybody have anything that they wanted to ask? Well, let me look in the chat box. There's nothing in the chat box. Or is there something? Hi, Arkady. Hi. Um, so I'm open for questions. For the, uh, thank you. For the actors submitting, is there special emphasis on being a parent? Ah, a very, very good question. Um, yes and no. This is not for parents. Um, uh, I, I'd like to change the world as quickly as I can. However, I, we are a theater company. We are producing theater. We are assessed and judged based by the quality of art that we produce. So that really goes to artists who are burning to make a change. If they're parent also, we will help them. Uh, if they're not, we would not count against them in any combination of, of, of that. Who is the selection committee? Me and me only. Uh, the, the reason for that is because again, this is a curatorial project. Um, we will need to uh, uh, select artists who are, um, my, who really work within my vision of theater as happened before, which I'd like to think is very flexible and inclusive and, uh, uh, not particularly driven by a specific form, uh, but it, it does have to be for the artists that, that I can uh, lead the curation with. Uh, so the artistic process still has to be there and to, uh, become, to be an artistic producer is also, uh, a cura is also an artistic process, which was just recently, by the way, um, acknowledged as an artistic process and not administrative one. So yes, so that would be me. Another question, how many artists do you expect to take on? Thank you. Um, we think that it would be approximately 20. Uh, the budget for the program is 325,000 a year. Uh, if, I were, if we were launching this program uh, last year, when we first came up with this, it would be probably eight or 10 at the most, because again, it's a pilot project, so we want to make it manageable. And we also want to offer people uh, in income that would be of sort of, of of size that would make any some sense and practical for people. Uh, however, in COVID, I can't possibly um, um, you know have higher averages. I would like to give it to more people, uh, but at the same time, it needs to be a manageable amount. And again, um, ten thousand a year. People who are not on a program, there is going to be. <laughs> probably as many making that as they are in the program making that. So again, uh, you don't have to be um, necessarily part of the program to uh, maintain your work opportunities within the company or, or financial size even. Um, sorry if I missed this. Are all contracts on a three-year term or is, uh, is each applicant's duration reviewed differently? Uh, an excellent question. It is three years and three years only. Uh, that was also asked on Monday at the webinar, as in, do we select artists uh, every year or is it for three years? Because it's a pilot project and because, um, you know, doing it for one year is just a lip service. Doing it for two years isn't quite a, a, um, a span to be able to really monitor um, its, its value, its, pro its, its validity. Uh, three years is the minimum. And uh, it is not impossible that we might add one or two people as, as, we go, as we go forward, but it'll be more of an exception in the rule. And perhaps if somebody decides that uh, 
oh my goodness, they have a contract for two years somewhere. It makes no sense for them to be here and the opportunity opens up. That's kind of a great um, time to bring somebody new, but uh, not, not a, there isn't a separate process for that. And then we don't expect a majority of new intakes for year two and three. Um, now, if a director was coming to work with TIFT, would he or she or they be required to use big artists first exclusively or not at all? Uh, a very good question. They will be a certain flexibility, but there will be an expectation that uh, a percentage of the roles are used uh, from the big. And again, uh, not necessarily. It depends on where the rest of the people have landed in the season and what they're available to do. Uh, before um, uh, before that conversation with the director's head, uh, and it's it's it 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 might be a request uh, whether it will be a requirement and to what extent it's hard to know at this point because if by that moment by that point um, uh, the work is is already established and vast majority of people we know exactly what they're going to be doing and etc then if it's it, it depends and it also depends on the size of the project if it's if it's a major musical probably we'll need to use something if it's one person show and it's not even appearing in Barry then it's a completely different um, uh, um, different um, um, thing um, pa -pa 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 -pa. Uh, okay, let me see. Okay. Okay. To what extent does the work, proposed work put forth by the artist applicant participant have to be appropriate to bury audience? In other words, is there opportunity for this program to support and cultivate work that may be better suited uh, to other communities, locations, etc.? An excellent question. I proudly say that I'm a man who invented social distancing in the theater 20 years ago, so I never bothered what an audience has to think. It has to be of visceral meaning to them, but not to reach a certain number. Uh, so absolutely not. You're totally encouraged to be as daring as you want. And uh, do have to, if, if it is for a berry market or berry subscription season, to uh, kind of speak about why it would be of interest, but not on, on the terms of, uh, 3,000 people will come because if we all knew how many people will come, we'll be producing nothing but hits. Um, so uh, uh, the marketing of uh, the audience development of work is left to me and our office team, not your responsibility under this. Uh, what is included in an application process that is on a website, but uh, under submissions, associations, whatever the link is called, uh, under About Us, general link. Um, basically, it's a 250-word statement uh, talking about uh, the three things that uh, would uh, uh, scare you the most, uh, three things you'd like to change in the world if you are not, um, if you haven't done any shows at TIFT for uh, at least three shows at TIFT, you, we, uh, we request that you give, um, provide a, a sample of your artistic work for artists who have done at least three shows. It's entirely um, um, uh, what's the word? At your option. My goodness, I'm forgetting. Um, and um, and that. So yes. So review that. If there are any questions, if they're not clear, please send an email that is used for submissions, and we'll 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 clarify and answer. Can you speak to work equal guarantee income and how uh, monetization will be decided for each project? Um, I want to research X, Y, Z counts for this amount of uh, or the guaranteed income versus. Uh, I want to do one more. Never mind. Um, okay, so um, um, so um, that's a good question. It's really based on what work it is and what the standards are. So if you are an actor and working on equity scale and you've established a certain income from theater from before that will be honored, that will be extra. Uh, if it's new work development, um, workshopping or whatever clauses that are, that are appropriate to use uh, for equity um, or contracts, uh, that will be used. Um, uh, we will still be using your agents to negotiate the fees. So all the 10,000 is, is the very minimum financial guarantee that the theater guarantees you. Um, and then, but the actual work is subject to negotiation. Uh, if it's a play, then we would use, uh, if you're writing a play, uh, a playwright uh, agreement, if you're a director and so on. If you are a designer, then you use a designer contract. If anything else, you use that. Um, 
yeah so it's 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 basically um uh the ten thousand dollars is a, a pledge from the organization that you will earn at least that a year how much it is it depends on the work it depends on when how how long and much like very it's the same thing as what we would normally do so the budget you said that you have per year is that actually per year or per three years no it's 325 per year so it's nine it's almost a million dollars over three years um uh how would an actor give a sample of our artistic work um using a self tape that you particularly like um that you'd like to use again uh we don't really want you to create anything deliberately targeted at this program uh if you have a, a videotape of a submission that you've made and you absolutely love it and uh, there are, please send that if on the other hand you'd like to uh, offer something new um you can also do that we specifically said we don't want fresh additions for this um if you have something that you like please do that to clarify when you are discussing more independent contracts is it a referral to creative areas like playwriting as in would the majority of contracts be working collaborating within the theater within the tiff team yes and no it depends on what it is uh you could uh, uh <clears throat> you could for example as a player like a uh, playwright slash actor slash director say to you i would like to send sent to me uh, i would like to spend the summer in edmonton and i'd like to i don't want to come to ontario for such and such reason whatever that may be uh, i would like to work and produce at the fringe festival uh in edmonton or edinburgh or adelaide anyway uh i would like to do that so i would say okay great so we would have to actually commit to paying you as an actor we would have to commit paying you as a producer uh you would then have to uh show that you have a budget where you cannot lose because what i don't want it to be is to be in direct way to fund your project it has to be for your income and income only so if you're only asking for a thousand dollars more and whatever and you have a plan to raise it that would be great so bunch of things it's it's uh um you know it, it could be <laughs> you are working you're testing a new project of working with youth in a community where you live and if it's original enough it doesn't particularly need to be for barry although that would be a priority but if but if you can show that, that there is a specific reason it's a unique methodology that is only available and possible in your community we can talk about that um can the support material for the application be written yes it can uh, for actors who write their own shows or transition to playwriting, absolutely, that would be a great thing to do. And by the way, I think we say that there is a minimum combined um, uh, something, uh, length. Um, you can use that in whatever medium you like. And the more you can give, the more diversity, the better. Um, regarding the application work sample, do you want video samples? So would a combination of video and writing samples be useful? Anything you like. Uh, there isn't a preference. It's whatever, um, whatever would show you off the best. Whatever will make you um, um, uh, whatever will help you put your best foot forward. Really, I think that that's all of the questions that I see. Any more? Okay, I think. I think this is it. Um, I'm going to be here for another 10 minutes. Uh, if anybody would like to ask anything else that has been asked uh, and would like to stick around, um, please do. Uh, if there are any questions that come up at the end, please also feel free to ask them. Uh, somebody asked a very good question last time, uh, and it was like in one of those sort of after two minutes of silence, somebody came back and asked a question whether working uh uh working knowledge of english uh, is is necessary and the answer is no you don't even need to speak english to work potentially because there's some uh, some language driven explorations that we might be doing in the future and even without that um it's um it's totally fine
Cool. Again, thank you very much. Oh no, there's another question. On the website, the support material total maximum is five minutes. How would we calculate page length if it's written one page per minute? Um, use your best judgment. Don't blatantly take advantage of it. I'm not going to have time to sit there and count, you know, how, um, honestly, uh, it will be easier for me just to read it. But if it's blatantly going over, like if it's a, if it's a novel, then it will be a problem. But don't stress out. Stress about that. I will not cut or whatever, um, you know, if it's within reason. I think this is it. So thank you. Again, I'll be here for eight more minutes. Feel free to come back with any questions um, or send an email um, afterwards. Again, thank you for your interest and for being here. There's another question. Once you're chosen for the project, is it solely up to the artist to come up with projects to do or are they just placed on projects that are already in motion? Uh, a very good question. Uh, well, there are several ways to answer it. Uh, it would be that um, people in, in the project, uh, this is how it would work. You can volunteer, uh, not volunteer, you're mandated to um, talk about ideas that you'd like to do. I may counteract it based on what it is because it's a combined, it's a curatorial partnership. You say you want to play Philly. I'm thinking, you know, you'd be better off as Hamlet actually and that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a conversation. Um, I think uh, uh, people chosen for the program could potentially get together and co-propose something because nothing makes my job easier than a project looking after 10 of, 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 of the people I am responsible for uh, in one thing. Um, it is possible that I can come up with an idea and, and propose, and it is possible that you contract it. I, uh, 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 placing people into projects um, that are already in motion is sort of a repertory theater to do. They sort of talk about the ensemble, but really it's about the, the mandate of, of that. Uh, we can make everything um, everything work like a mandate because all that TIFF does, we say that we are an urban, uh, or we do work typically associated for, uh, with an urban center for uh, a new non-urban audience. Under that, anything can be framed into um, anything as, as it has. We do immersive work, we do musical theater, we do new work, we do site specific, you know, everything. And we can do it in the Calloway, we can do it in Adelaide, we can do it in London and then in Berlin and so on and all over the place. So it, it's, it's entirely possible. Um, it is also possible that somebody will propose the project uh, and I would go, or, or uh, it's not even originating from within Art is Big, but like a normal channel. And I will say, oh my goodness, such and such, I need to use them for $4,000. Maybe I will, maybe this particular part will be, will, be, will be good for them. And you may say, yes, it's interesting, or you may say no. And then I'll have to look at something else. So trajectories to good artistic direct, uh, uh, idea on paper anyway, before it goes to rehearsal, comes from all over the place, really. Hope I answered that. It asks to briefly discuss three artistic opportunities that would scare you. Is that what you would like to do or do you have done already? Yes, and I'm very good at it. So more of the same would be great. Can you please speak more to what is expected from the artists at the monthly meetings uh, and what they have to prepare? Very good question. Um, I don't know exactly. All I know, it's not necessarily artistic stuff. Um, it's more logistical of the program. It's more looking at what you hope would change in your life as an actor. Um, I know for an actor to separate work and personal life is impossible at best, uh, but it would be more about lifestyle, more about work conditions, more about ideas that you've, that you've had about what, how we could rehearse something and how we can perform and how we can actually treat an audience or those kind of things. That maybe we will have keynote speakers about um, financial planning or real estate planning 
um, uh, you know, it may be that members in in the group would 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 suggest that something is important for them and suggest a key speaker, keynote speaker, or or a guest, or uh, or um, I bring in an artistic director from some other country to talk about how theater not created so much in this particular case, although that's interesting, but administered because. Um, you know, now people thinking that theater uh, as the form is going through a challenge. I don't think theater as a form is going through a challenge. It's the way it's administered is going through a challenge. The way it's produced is going through a challenge. Um, so anyway, so those conversations. Um, uh, it made sort of, there may be some room for, for, uh, for artistic uh, stuff, but not necessarily the priority of the meetings. So you don't have to prepare anything. And it's not going to be... Uh, meeting with an audience type of meetings. Uh, it's not going to be, let's now talk to the sponsor. No, 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 none of those. It'll be closed and internal to the group. Uh, with COVID restriction, can you, uh, can your proposed project be in film media form and such as short films from the web series? Would you prefer performance requiring live audience? Very good question. I've made a promise to myself and to others around me that we will never put any artistic content on uh, digital means uh, simply because it's what we do I think is all about a gathering it's not about a place um, and I encourage uh, uh, I would encourage strategic interesting artistic use of technology as an art form uh, not as a not as a reality through which to uh, make theater available because uh, I really think it's um, it's not what people are wanting and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, while there are restrictions, we may be, in fact, beginning rehearsal on 10 projects and continuing over a longer period of time. Maybe how we rehearse shows will, will, will change. Um, but I'm not really interested at all in, in uh, exploring digital things. As a reaction to COVID, if you propose something that strategically rethinks everything for an eternity, because of COVID, that's a different question. Um, next question. How, hi, how important is the list of professional credentials to your name for the application? You are professional but have been struggling to get hired but do not want to be a reflection on what you're capable of creating, da da da, da or uh, capable of creating changes you can make as an artist, especially when branching out to different areas of theater. Uh, this program is we don't know who will apply. It is equally open, however, to professionals at any point in their careers, emerging, established, uh, mid-career, anything and everything. Uh, it may, and there isn't an agenda or a quota, if you will, where we go, well, we'll need 10 emerging 10, because we're not uh, hiring a repertory theater where you kind of need, oh my goodness, I need a, an engineer or I need a comedian or I need a singer or a dancer and that kind of stuff. Uh, we can still have access to this. All I want is bold thinkers, really. Uh, it doesn't, you, uh, um, 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 your uh, professional resume is not entirely, if the application makes sense, is not necessarily, it's not a general addition. It's not addition for specific parts and you're worried that somebody better will come in. No, it deliberately takes all those, uh, um, you know, frankly, it's a program for artists who are brilliant, but, uh, you know, start living at, at mid-career because they were either way ahead of the time or needed bigger material to play. And, I want to give people an opportunity. You know, it's one thing for me to say, you didn't make daring decisions. Okay, but if you did and then you fire, um, you'll never work again. Because uh, I will not be penalized for it and after will be penalized for it if they never work again. So this is an opportunity. You're in a three-year program. You can screw up all you want. Uh, I still have to pay for three years and I just hope that something comes out of it in the end. But I'm not going to toss you just because you didn't play your part to my satisfaction. You know? So that's sort of, uh, that's, that's, it's a responsibility to longer evolution of a talent as opposed to an immediate sort of, um, sort of, you know, because theater is kind of created like 
film now. You, you're expected to come with your performance. This is not, this is the opposite. Just trying to make sure I'm looking everywhere to make sure that we've answered everything. Is there an age range you're looking at all for applicants? Absolutely none. If you can, uh, if you can show that you're a professional actor uh, and professional by um, the things you talk about, the things that you want, and uh, a bunch of reasons, a bunch of ways you can explain that. Uh, no, that there isn't an age. Again, uh, it's not. We are putting together a company, uh, a rep company that kind of has to have a bit of everything. Um, this is not it and if it happens that it it, it um, selects uh, exclusively 40 year old artists or exclusively 80 year old artists then that actually uh, kind of looks after immediately answers what the action research is all about and that is oh my goodness this program was actually needed among the senior artists for example you know um, so no, no, it's, 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 I'm looking to know who needs it the most, actually, as opposed to, if I can say that, is oppo as opposed to, um, we have a predetermined quota. Um, cause you know, right now is the most amazing time. I can't possibly think about what I'm going to produce cause I have no idea what will open where and how and what art form is easier than others. So it's a perfect opportunity not to worry about your suitability for projects because you know, It'll be two months before anything happens. Okay, everyone, thank you very, very much. I'm going to log off now. Again, if there are any questions, feel free to please send an email. Uh, there are no questions that would make sense, um, even if you're not clear about anything that um, that I've said. Please ask again, because that that is also my my cue to be clear on the on the topic. So. Again, thank you. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. Take care. Bye.